absolute losers, the Detroit Pistons, giving away two of its better offensive players for limited guys, two seconds, an absolute travesty of a franchise. No wonder why this team ain't winning more than 23 games last half decade. Troy Weaver giving the Motor City high fevers, Mr. Underachiever, no more Alex Burks, worst team all time in the works, roster in complete disarray, all time disgusting display, trapped in a losing maze, their 2024 NBA highlight getting rid of Killian Hayes. New York didn't even give up a single first rounder, why the heck did Troy hold on to Badanovich for that long, tanked his value, franchise sitting on unprecedented lows, absolutely nothing to show, the whole organization blows, at this point the Pistons should just qualify for the disastrous draft emergency. Nick fans had their 3 minutes of worrisome moment thinking it was just Burks but received tons of perks, Detroit stacking up seconds, adding more role players for absolutely nothing. Pistons fans might have well root for the Knicks in the playoffs from giving Marvin Backley 3 years, Monty Williams 80 million, holding an IV hostage to start the season, the dumbest run franchise of the century. Losers, the Chicago Bulls, an absolute travesty of a pathetic franchise, still haunted by trading away Jimmy Butler and nothing to show, not making a trade since August 2021, 30 months ago, not good enough to get out the play in, not bad enough to tank, wasting away the productive Alex Caruso, a key role energy piece for any contender, the definition of the franchise being pretenders continuing to overvalue their players, and look at these subpar results, they ain't getting anywhere. The new regime, literally worse than girl packs, both fans getting angry almost near Pistons level, Debo about to walk for nothing in free agency, they asked for it, zero freaking trades made his entire tenure, absolutely criminal, refusing to acquire picks for a guy who's a regular season bucket but nowhere near a first option on a great team, the delusion that this front office has, not moving Vucevic, no response, after over 2 years since Lonzo's injury, nothing on the market for Levine elected to have season surgery, nothing for Andre Drummond either, a guy at the height of his value, teams gotta produce same results as last season, waiting for absolutely fucking nothing adding on to their terrible reputation. Loser, LeBron James and the Lakers, plus the media obsession, all that talk every single day non-stop, getting the next star, forming a big three, thousands of hours for the so-called experts convincing us who the Lakers should get and will get, only to absolutely positively get nobody. D'Lo playing like a man possessed since the trade rumors, what happened to DeJounte Murray? Now waiting for the offseason, they just acknowledging this season's no good, if they miss the play in entirely or lose before the semis, many will blame management not doing a thing, the injuries to Gabe Vincent, Reddish and Vando forced the stars to carry a, a heavier load, just a game over 500 with James and Davis very healthy, LeBron creating narratives with his social media posts have many wowing. When a team's been mediocre for months and things remain the same, they're not gonna delusionally become excellent out of nowhere. A few more months for guys like Tori and Prince, Cam and Christian Wood, hearing all the critics on Twitter before their mental health drastically gets better. Loser, Killian Hayes, so bad the Pistons don't even want him, still inefficient, no impact with the worst team, now the 22 year old could be very well out the league, have a great overseas career. Loser for now, Ryan Archidiakono ended his Knicks tenure, one of the most unbreakable streaks the league has seen, fan favorite, once the leader of all his Nova guys, unless New York brings him back next season. There's a chance he might already play his final NBA game, but given the Villanova connections, if Arch travels back to the Big Apple, across the boroughs, perhaps join former teammate Mikhail Bridges, many Knicks fans more upset about trading away Arch than getting Boogie and Burks, Diagono made his presence felt on the bench, screaming defensive 3 seconds on opposing teams. If 2024 is the last time we've seen Arch on an NBA floor as a player, Definitely not the last time he will make his presence felt in the league. Loser, Marcus Morris Sr. Awarded the keys to the city of brotherly love? His name absolutely shoved. Any player who plays for Daryl Morey, don't ever trust him. Winner, the New York Knicks. Leon Rose continues with his magic, turned the franchise around in an instant. 
from taking on future franchise player Jalen Brunson, getting OG, leading to big winning streaks, blowing teams out despite the lack of superstar talent compared to the likes of Boston, Denver, and Milwaukee based on team chemistry, good health, and hard work alone. The New York Knicks are low-key title contenders, franchise heading towards the right direction. Nobody could have anticipated this even a year ago, adding two 40% outside shooters, Brunson won't have to carry a super heavy load, not giving up any first rounders, even for OG, that's called smarts right there. From being one of the dumbest teams during the mid to late 2010s to arguably the smartest run organization, the long awake journey fans been dreaming of. Loser, Atlanta Hawks, DeJounte Murray begging for a trade, him and Trey Young don't work, only a game ahead of the no direction Nets, exposed as an overrated defender, stuck in a no win situation, will have to bear two and a half more months at the ATL. Loser, Golden State Warriors, absolutely doing nothing, head scratching Clay Thompson, Andrew Wiggins, struggling terribly all year, good games once in a blue moon, the return of CP and GP the second, soon, should be enough to keep the team within play in range, not elite defensively, too small to be a real dread. Loser, Joe Harris, no longer with the worst team in the league, could be his very last time in the NBA. 32 years old, hasn't been relevant since choking 2021 playoffs, never been the same since, Mr. Poor Man's Nick Anderson. Winner, Philadelphia 76ers acquiring Buddy Hill, only 3 seconds, Marcus Moore Sr., Kormas, Traded to Indy, a reliable starter, Buddy continues to be Mr. Durable, missing less games for his 7 season career than MB missed the last 2 weeks, brings in outside shooting, high offense, opens up Philly cap space for an extension next season. Winners, Dallas Mavericks, landing both Daniel Gafford for Mr. DMP Rashawn Holmes and getting stretched for PJ Washington out of miserable Charlotte, the 25 year old brings in security for the banged up Derek Lively. 11 and 8 numbers, will get easy buckets from Luka, kept Josh Green out of trades, getting PJ by giving up the 2027 first, another 25 year old coming off averages of 13 and 5, giving Grant struggling Williams averaging just 8 points on 41% shooting, not bringing the D like he's supposed to, only at the W games, if you know what I mean, the team much better positioned to finish strong, looking to avoid the play in with much better defensive bigs, letting Dwight Powell sit deeper on the bench. Loser, Grant Williams, went from potential dynasty aspirations as good role player with Boston, a historical franchise, to playing with a generational prodigy in Luka, to basketball hell in Charlotte, in all less than a year span. How did we get there? Everything went downhill since the Jimmy Butler saga, could be super irrelevant until his contract expires, will need to rebuild his value, Mr. Eastern Conference Finals contender, to big name free agent, to basketball irrelevancy, an absolute travesty turn of events. Loser Seth Curry, traded to the Mavs three different times, might be numb to it by now, at least he'll get to play for the same franchise as Pops. Loser, James Boltnight, a failure of a lottery pick, Mr. James Ain't Right, might actually play less career games than Anthony Bennett, destroy his reputation with off-court troubles, many teams likely staying far away. Loser Brooklyn Nets, the Dinwiddie trade for Dennis Schroeder, it's whatever, but Sean Marks absolutely don't have the goals to blow up the roster. It doesn't matter about the lack of picks this year, too many role players stuck in no man's land, they want like 4 firsts for Mikhail Bridges in their dreams. Plus they still gotta deal with Ben Simmons, slight winners, Phoenix Suns adding Royce O'Neal, Rowdy from Memphis needs as much depth as possible being heavily star driven. Another slight winner, Monte Morris being Minnesota's backup, viable floor general after a terrible time with the losing Pistons, now on a contender. Winners, Oklahoma City, getting vet Gordon Hayward, a part time player but good experience, just a hair below 15 5 and 5, former all star still producing at a very low cost for OKC, if he ends up fitting well, could be brought back at a much lower number. The Dunder's chances at advancing past the first round of the playoffs a little higher. Stuck in a weird spot, Kelly Olynyk, the Canadian at least gets to play for his home country. 32 years old, little past his prime, Utah a much better chance being in the playoffs than the Raptors. A free agent this summer, zero risk for Toronto. 
but Olenek makes no sense being on an 18 and 33 team. Winner, Spencer Dinwiddie, accused of going through the motions with the Nets, traded to the Raptors, a team that don't want him, will be free to join a better team. Loser, Bruce Brown, staying with the Raptors, no contender this time again, stuck in Canada. Loser, PG Tucker, stuck with the Clippers, getting little to no minutes, not bad, but crying about it. The Utah Jazz also didn't do much, getting Kara Lewis Jr., many forgot still in the NBA. Winner, Boston Celtics, trading for Xavier Tillman, the insurance for Porzingis and Horford, solid backup big, started the 2023 playoffs for Memphis, getting Springer 2 for essentially nothing, Brad Stevens working his magic. Winner, Duck McDermott going back to the team he balled out for in one of the play-in games, was wasting away in San Antonio, now with a lead playmaking Halliburton, replacing what Betty Hill provides, and expiring, doesn't hurt any 2024 free agency plans. Winner, the Pat Beth Pod announcing his move to the Bucks, nice way to market his work. Loser, Doc Rivers. Getting roasted for his 1 and 5 start, firing Adrian Griffin after starting 30 and 13 for a well known figure blowing big leads, the Bucks don't seem to be scaring anybody.